Have you noticed that streaming is starting to feel awfully similar to cable? Well, you're not the only one. The traditional streaming business model that Netflix pioneered is dying, and the media industry has been taking notice. If you've been paying attention, you might also know that the past few years have been a rough time for Netflix, as the company has been starting to flatline in terms of their subscriber growth. Of course, they've also been facing growing costs and increasing competition from other players in the streaming space. In response to all of these problems, the company's stock had one of its worst years in recent memory in 2022, with Netflix crashing over 45% during the course of the year, as the company had a quarterly loss in subscribers for the first time in over a decade, which shocked investors and led the stock to crumble. Domestic subscriber growth in the United States has been even worse, as now most of the positive gains that Netflix has been able to make are coming from international markets. The company has been scrambling to restore investor confidence with new initiatives, like ad-supported streaming plans and cracking down on customers sharing their accounts. This is despite the fact that historically Netflix had said it would never offer ad-supported streaming plans. So why is Netflix all of a sudden pulling a 180 and completely changing the streaming business model that it pioneered? The simple answer is that the traditional streaming business model just isn't that good at making money. And this has become increasingly clear with the growing competition in the streaming space. After all, it's not just Netflix that's been facing problems with its streaming business. Disney Plus also lost 4 million subscribers in its most recent quarter. And other streaming services like Paramount Plus and Peacock have also been facing slower subscriber growth. And all of these newer streaming services have been operating at steep losses while they've been building their streaming offerings. Disney Plus had an operating loss of $659 million just this last quarter alone. Now, running a streaming service has always been a high-cost operation, but this has become even more clear as other players have entered the space to compete with Netflix. Back when Netflix really started the streaming model as we know it in 2007, it was an exciting and visionary idea that seemed like it had potential for near-limitless growth. And for a while, the growth numbers supported this idea, as Netflix dominated the space and was able to grow its subscriber base exponentially. But Netflix heavily benefited from its first mover advantage, and the fact that it had no real competition in the streaming space for years. This also made it so that Netflix was able to more easily make deals with media producers to fill its content library, and it didn't have many other platforms to compete with to secure the rights for this content. For a while, this made streaming an absolute no-brainer from the perspective of the consumer. You had access to a massive library of your favorite movies and shows all on one streaming platform at a cheap monthly cost. I mean, what's not to like about that? It was a way better deal than cable, so for years people were happy to cut cable and hop on a Netflix subscription, which powered the company's explosive growth. But here's the problem. That's a fine business model when you're the only competition in town, but nowadays there are tons of streaming services that are all competing for the same subscribers. This means that media producers are now saving their intellectual property for their own streaming services, which has significantly driven up the price of securing licensing deals to offer content on streaming platforms. This is why Netflix has spent so much money in recent years on producing Netflix original series in order to have content for their service. But creating original content for streaming comes at a very hefty price, and this has contributed enormously to Netflix's business expenses. Other streaming services like Disney Plus that have also focused heavily on creating original content are scaling back on their content production in order to cut costs and attempt to reach profitability. Another reality that these companies are facing is that most people are not going to subscribe to all of the streaming platforms out there. Your average person is probably only going to subscribe to one or two of these platforms at a time, and they might not even keep their subscription for very long. Back in the day when Netflix was the only really big streaming service out there, most people would keep their monthly subscription almost indefinitely. But the current reality is that many streaming customers nowadays are more than happy to save some money for themselves and cancel a subscription after they've watched the movies and shows that they wanted to see. Then they might choose to switch to a different streaming service for a while and watch the things that they want to see on that platform. 
After all, why pay for a subscription when you've already watched all the things that you wanted from it? This has made the problem of subscriber churn even more prevalent for these major streaming platforms. They are trying to figure out how to keep subscribers for more than a few months at a time. And it's not an easy problem to solve because the increased streaming competition makes it really easy and tempting for customers to switch. All of these issues are putting heavy pressure on Netflix and other streaming companies' profitability, which is why you are starting to see these companies scramble to make their streaming services more profitable. After all, footing the bill for billions of dollars in losses a year like Disney Plus is doing right now is just not a sustainable business model. And this is why there's been such a rise in advertising-supported streaming plans, to the point where even Netflix completely backtracked on its historical position on not offering ads. Because the reality is that advertising has been the financial backbone behind TV and media for ages. Advertising is the reason why cable actually made media companies lots of money. You might be seeing where I'm going with this, but if you've been starting to feel like streaming is beginning to look a lot more like cable, there's a reason for that. Media companies are moving away from Netflix's traditional streaming business model into one that looks a lot more like a hybrid between streaming and cable, because the economics just work better. While this hybrid model still has the conveniences of streaming like being able to watch things on demand from most devices and the ability to manage and cancel your plan with ease, there's also increasingly more things traditionally associated with cable, like a renewed focus on advertising and higher pricing for subscription plans. Bloomberg showed that subscribing to the ad-free plan for every major streaming service now costs nearly $100 a month as companies have been quickly raising their ad-free plan prices so that they can actually make money. Paying $100 a month to have access to all streaming platforms and the content that they house sounds a lot more reminiscent of cable's pricing than it does the days of paying a couple dollars a month to have access to most things on Netflix. If you want to pay less money and watch on an ad-supported plan, you can certainly do that, but the streaming companies are covering the difference in the lower plan pricing, with the additional advertising revenues that they get. Unfortunately, the golden days of streaming are pretty much behind us at this point. Streaming has become too saturated and fragmented by competition, which has made the legacy streaming business model even more uneconomical. With companies facing growing pressure from investors to renew their focus on profitability and to stop taking heavy losses, it seems likely that streaming platforms will venture even further towards advertising and higher plan pricing. In other words, the old days of the traditional Netflix streaming model are dead. But be sure to let me know your thoughts on the shift in streaming in the comments below, and please subscribe to the channel for more finance content. Thanks.